So hello everybody. Go my Mara get ahead. Um, but welcome to another meeting at the Umona Chemical Society. This week we will be making bioplastics. And here with me is Javon, is the first vice president. So Javon will be assisting me in carrying out the experiment today. Um, so we're going to get right into it. The first thing we're going to do is wait out our cornstarch. So we're going to go to the analytical balance to do that. We will also be using 6% volume volume of acetic acid, which means six mils of acetic acid in 100 mils of solution. So we've already went ahead and made that up um, from our 100% acetic acid. And now we're going to do the weighing of our cornstarch. Um, we need about 10 grams, I think. Is it 10 gram? Right. So here we go. So we'll be weighing out 10 grams. Right. So we add our beaker. And then we zero the balance. There, there are really two ways to weigh. You can weigh by difference or weigh by zeroing. So you can weigh by, weighing by difference would mean that you add the beaker in, you take the weight of the beaker, and then you would add the equivalent amount of um, solid that you want. But this is an analytical balance. So this big beaker is very heavy for it. So we're going to just zero it and weigh out the amount of cornstarch that we need, which is 10 grams. So I'm trying to zero the balance. No, I may have to use a smaller container. But it seems that the beaker is too heavy, right? Yeah, it's too heavy for it too. So we're going to use a smaller beaker, trying to see if we can find one. Here's one. Found a smaller one. So I've added the smaller beaker and I zero the balance and then we just add 10 grams. So 10 grams is quite an amount. And when you're weighing, you want to not touch the beaker because the weight of your hand will affect the mass. So we're just at about 1.2 grams there about. That's 2.5 approximately. 
and you find that an analytical balance is a lot more accurate than a top pan balance. So a top pan balance usually it doesn't have this part to it. And also it usually gives you your weights to two decimal places as opposed to an analytical balance, which gives you the weight or the mass rather to four decimal places. So it's a lot more accurate. So we are about we're at about seven grams. And we're aiming for 10 grams. So this is something you also can try at home. So we will be posting after we are finished with the experiment, we will be posting on Instagram a procedure where you can mimic this at home. All right, so we don't know. So we're at 9.68, almost there. Nine point nine seven. Just a little bit more. So when you're weighing, here's the thing about weighing. So for example, if you need like a tooth more, for example, if you need ten grams of something, usually you can go like about ten point one or so grams. That's good because. When you are carrying out your reaction, you find that you're going to lose reactants along the way uh, in the process. So there we have 10.07. And you... ...is air resistance to... So we are at 10.0699, which is about 10.07, all right? So now we're going to move our cornstarch around to the next side of the lab, where we'll be adding water and mixing, after which we'll add our other reagents and add it to a heat source, which would be... Um, why I keep forgetting what the heat source name? Hot plate. Hot, Hot plate. That's the name, guys. I, I keep forgetting the name of that thing, you know, and I don't know why. So that's the hot plate over there. Very old, I know. But now we're going to add water to the cornstarch. And mix. All right, so we need 15 to 20 mils of water. So we are measuring out some distilled water at this time. So this is our distilled water. Um, we may add 15 instead of 20. I don't know, whatever the ancestors tell you. And then after adding that, then we would mix it out so that we get an even suspension. We're adding, remember we would need some more water. And as we added it, you can see a little bit of fizzing, not much. And the solution, or the suspension rather, is 
milky white. We probably add 10, 20 mils actually. So we're measuring out 10 mils again, and we're going to add it to the cornstarch and then mix until we get an even suspension. So we're adding another 10 mils, and then we are going to mix until we get an even suspension. So it should appear nice and milky white like what we have here. And we just mix it until it's even. It's almost like mixing last for really. So you mix until you get out all the lumps and all of that out of it. You get a nice, even, homogeneous suspension. Yeah. So it looks just about there. Um, after this, we're going to add five mils of glycerin and continue mixing. And then we're going to add five mils of acetic acid and mix. So this This is our glycerin, our glycerol, which is very precious. <laughs> you don't want to waste it. So we're adding approximately five mils. As you can see, it's very thick and syrupy because it's concentrated. I mean, glycerol in general is thick. Yeah, don't do it. Actually, so we actually measured about seven point five. We're gonna add it. As you can see, the glycerol is very thick and syrupy. Glycerol in general is thick, but this is concentrated glycerol. So that makes it even thicker. Right? It's, it looks kind of like corn syrup, if you ask me. And then we're going to add about 5 ml of our 6% acetic acid, which we made up here. We made up 100 ml of it. So we're just going to add five mils, about five mils of it, measuring it out. And then we're going to add it to our mixture, stir it, make sure it's homogeneous. And then we're going to add it to our heat source, which would be our hot plate. So that's us adding the acetic acid. And it's on the hot plate. So we're just going to turn on the heat. And the mixture, when we're finished, it should be white and opaque and kind of gel like. Right? After we get that gel like mixture, then we're going to Spread it onto aluminum foil and allow it to dry to get the bioplastic, yeah? So, while this is cooking, um, we're going to go to the theory of the lab so we can learn some, right? Not that you haven't learned anything, but that you can learn multiple things, right? Alrighty, so bioplastics, what are they? 
or bioplastics are polymers made from renewable biomass sources, right? And I think the name is pretty self-explanatory. So our bioplastic is biodegradable. So it takes about 180 days. Not too long. Less, that's less than a year, right? It takes about 180 days. As opposed to traditional plastics that we know can take up to a thousand years, if not even more, to decompose or to degrade, rather. So our bioplastics can be made of different sources of biomass. Um, you can use starch or cellulose from corn or potato. Um, and you have other sources of biomass that are commonly used. Um, and these sources are naturally produced by plants right? Hence why when we use them, they are easily biodegradable. So what are the types of bioplastics? You have more than two types, but there are two main types that are produced in large quantities. And that's your polylactic acid and polyhydroxyl alkanoid, so PLA and PHA. So your polylactic acid is a thermoplastic polyester, and we should know what a polyester is, right? what a polyester is, right? Um, it has a backbone formula C3H4O2, and we obtain this polyester through the condensation of lactic acid, right? It can also be prepared by a ring opening polymerization of lactide. And lactide is a dimer. And a dimer is really a combination of two monomers. But in this case, this dimer is cyclic. So if you conduct a ring opening polymerization of this cyclic dimer, then you can form this polyester, just as if you join numerous lactic acids together to make a, poly, um, a polyester. So PHA, which is our polyhydroxyl alkanoid, are polyesters produced in nature by numerous microorganisms. And if you do maybe biochemistry, then you'd know about it. So this is produced by microorganisms through bacterial fermentation of sugars or lipids. And the bacteria is able to use this as a source of energy as well as a carbon store. They can be either thermoplastic or elastomeric with melting points ranging 40 to 180 degrees Celsius. So those are two main types are the ones that are produced in large quantities. So the process, how does it work? What really happens? In our experiment that we're doing now, we're making a polylactic acid, which would mean that we're using some lactic acid, right? A PLA. So the monomer, which means a single unit, is typically made from fermented plant starch, such as corn, cassava, sugar cane, or sugar beet pulp. When you conduct a direct condensation of lactic acid monomers in the corn starch, you are able to produce PLA, which is essentially what we are doing. We are carrying out the condensation of the lactic acid monomers in the current starch to produce the PLA. Um, and this process needs to be carried out at less than 200 degrees Celsius for each condensation that we're doing. So for each joining of the lactic acid, a single molecule of water is removed. Glycerol, which is also known as glycerin, is a hygroscopic liquid. It has a very high viscosity, as we would have shown you 
it's very thick and it looks a bit like corn syrup, very thick and syrupy in consistency. And it has three hydroxyl groups. And we should be familiar with this if we know anything about fats and lipids and or triglycerides breaking down into fatty acids and glycerol, right? Um, the glycerin acts as a plasticizer, so it lubricates the plastic, so to say. So if you want more flexible plas um, plastic, you add more glycerin. So I'm going to assume that the plastic that we're getting today is going to be very flexible because we added about 7.5 mils of glycerol rather than five mils. So if you want the plastic to be stiff, then you add less glycerin, right? If you want like a hard plastic. With our acetic acid, why do we add this? So acetic acid, which is really vinegar, especially at a concentration of 6%, that's really just vinegar that you can buy. It liberates acetate ions because it's really acetic acid that we call this vinegar. So it liberates acetic um, acetate ions and hydrogen ions in solution, which would be proton. And these ions react with the starch polymers. So they can be disordered more easily in solution. So the disorder is, res is resulting from disruption by water and the ionization of the acid. Um, and really what this does is to make the film more even or more homogeneous. So by adding a small amount of acetic acid, you kind of make, you break the polymer chains, making the plastic more brittle, less brittle, sorry. So the more acetic acid that you have, the less brittle your plastic. So we know that some plastic is more flexible than others. So some is pretty easier to break. So imagine something like a ruler um, versus like the, like this, wa this wash bottle. This is pretty flexible. You can squeeze it, you can bend it. A ruler now, um, especially the hard plastic rulers that we know, if we squeeze it or we bend it too much, it just breaks, right? So more acetic acid makes the plastic less brittle. And that's kind of similar to the role of the um, glycerol. We're also using water, good old water. Um, and it plays a very important role. It's acting as a solvent to dissolve the starch and it helps the starch molecules to stay distributed after heating. So now we're going to take a look at our experiment and the progress of the experiment. So right now we have the Solution thickening, let me go off this side. That's a bit of it. So it's thickening. Let me show you. There we go. So we might have to soon take it out so that it doesn't hard up in the beaker. Right, so that's the plastic forming. Um, we would take it out and put it on an aluminum sheet. <laughs> Javon says it smells like glue. So I bought some aluminum foil to put to spread it on. So let me just break the foil. So remember what we want is a thick opaque solution. Well, not a solution, it's supposed to be thick. Right, so let's put it on the foil.
This is the Ikaru So we're going to spread it out so it dries easier. Same it should have a nice color here. Probably when it's dry, it will lower the volume. So this should be less opaque. If you hear some less opaque, it should be fine. Uh, and I think I would probably break for it. No, not the All right, so right now it is kind of warm. It's not hot. Kind of warm. So you can get in. Yeah, there we go. So it's a bit warm. We're allowing it to dry and see how, yeah, what our product looks like. You want to make a next batch? I think you probably need a, um, a blue dryer. Yeah, based on the research that I did, you say it takes about. All right, guys, so while this is drying, it's getting thicker and thicker. I'm going to make a batch number two, right?
All right, guys. So now it has a latex huh? feeling. Oh, this part is drying. The edges. Oh, yeah, this part is drying. You know how that... I don't know if you know what I'm talking This thing that you used to see, you know, like tools and stuff. You know what I'm talking? Um, see. Guys, I don't know <laughs> if it's seal and Sydney. Um, it's this thing. Um, For example, if you're making like a kitchen counter. They put it in the corners or in the edges of it. The sealant? Yes, sealant. That thing. That's how this end feels as it dries. So I'm making a new batch. I measured about 10.2363 of cornstarch. Added 15 mils of water. And I'm going to add the five mils of glycerol and five mils of acetic acid. All right, so all that clinking and clanking that you guys are hearing is just me making up another solution, suspension or other. So this is it. So I added cornstarch with the glycerol, acetic acid, and water. And we're going to add it to the heat heat source, which is our hot plate, and wait for it to thicken. So the drying process is really the longest process. It's getting harder and harder, firmer and firmer, but the drying process takes a while. Okay? And if you want to, you can um, if you want to, you can add it to the microwave that speeds up the process of drying so that you get your product a lot faster. That's when you're doing a stove. You can add it to the microwave. Uh, let me show you how I'm doing. So I'm making up another solution here. So I use 15 mils water, five mils acetic acid, and five mils glycerol with 10.23 grams of cornstarch. I'll just use it. Usually you do the whole process at a less than 200 degrees Celsius. So it needs heat to happen, but too much heat is okay. All right. All 
while on the cutlet here continuously until it starts to thicken. Mm -hmm. These are from last week. All right, so guys, we are at the, I never remember what this thing name, hot plate. Hot plate. <laughs> and also We're it's at a the stirrer. hot plate. But for it to be a stirrer, we need a, a metallic. You need like a magnet. Yeah, a magnet. So you either have to add it inside the solution and then turn on the stirrer. So the magnet is, is a magnetic stirrer. So you'd have to add something into the solution that is magnetic, paramagnetic. So right now, solution looks liquidy, so to say. It takes a couple of minutes, not no long time to flip in. If you're at home, you would add all of this to your pot. Um, you can buy glycerin. I think they have, I think Benjamin sells glycerin. Yes, for babies. Benjamin's brand. They sell glycerin. They can buy it at the supermarket. Corn starch, as we know, is at the supermarket. Yes. Vinegar, we're using a 6% solution, which is very, very dilute. So that's pretty much your yes. white cane vinegar. Yeah. And you add all of that into your pot or your pan, and then you would add it to your stove. And don't forget the water. Oh, yeah, water. <laughs> Good old water. I mean, you guys wouldn't have this to work. I mean, unless you, you know, buy water and then think that, you know, rich people think. But if you buy water and stuff like that. Yes, the water has a very important see, role because the substances dilute in the water. Okay, we're getting some solids. So it's thickening, guys. And when it starts to thicken, it starts thickening fast. Not really, really fast. I want this one to be really, really thick.
So this is kind of like a water consistency. Maybe thicker, actually. And guys, it smells a lot like blue. Like the white blue. Does it do? Yes, it does. Maybe my nose now works. Probably. I don't even know what it smells. Maybe it's the mask. Yeah. Well, seems your mask has better quality than mine. <laughs> no. So I'm trying to get it early guys, before I take it off the meat. If you don't want it to get too hard, so then it can open the meat. Does it smell like blue? You don't smell it? Hmm. I'm smelling it, but I don't know. Man. You just smell like chemical. <laughs> it's because I used the glue recently. Maybe. I don't know. Probably the smell is coming from the vinegar. Uh, probably. You think it's at all because it's very dilute? Well, it's still, yeah, it's a completing of it. It kind of have a vinegar smell, mm -hmm. but it kind of near to a blue smell as well. So let's. That's enough eating for that one. Come on, man. It's almost hard. Oh, my God. That pan. All right, yeah, not it. Uh, we're gonna add it to the seed like so. You know, when people are cooking and they're like, oh, you're gonna do it like so. I always wonder why they don't say like this. <laughs> like so. Kind of look like mashed potato. <laughs> nah. Can't you see? I actually watched a video and the guy that made it, he ate this. Okay. But okay. it is made from edible material, so you guys, you can eat. No. <laughs> no, we do not advise that. It is edible. No, I know. Don't tell nobody that. It is. Guys, don't listen to Javon. I eat nothing. See, we know better than eat. to do that. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. This one is thicker, even without spreading. So we spread it, guys. We just make it cool faster. I mean, you know, common knowledge. We just spread it out, it cools faster instead of leaving it in one clump. And also to give it its form when it's cool. That's enough for the night. 
by the way, this happened. Just so you know. And you guys, you can leave it to dry for at least a week. It should have that plasticky look within that time. If you don't want to heat it up. Yeah, you can leave it to dry. Or you can put it in the microwave. You can have a microwave and dry it. That all out of water. Yours look more thick than mine. Yeah. They use less glycerin. I want to if you get thicker. It looks like it now, but I'm more. Yeah. This one is harder, guys. And this one is still very soft. All right, guys. So 
We're leaving this to dry. This one is harder. You're going to bring home your own? Uh, right now. Huh? Should I? If you want to, and microwave it. Probably. Or we can leave it here and come back and see this here. Either way, we're going to leave it to dry for a while. Yeah. And then you you update you guys on the progress, okay? All right, so now we're going to go back to the theory. Well, really, some questions is what we're going to go to to see what you guys have learned. Okay. All right, so question time. First question. Let me see the chat now. First question is, what is the main process used to form the bioplastic? Okay, what's the answer? Squirrel, <laughs> recall that, excuse me. <laughs> um, let's see who first got the answer. Michaela got the correct answer first. And that C, polymerization. Stephanie, why are you doubting yourself? polymerization. So question two, which two food products can be used to make bioplastic? What's the answer? Let me see some answers, guys. So, Michaela obviously was paying attention. So, the answer is F. So, Michaela gets that point again. For question three, let's see who's going to get that. Question three is, what is the purpose of vinegar in making bioplastic? Does it make it more brittle? Does it help form the polymer chains? Does it make it less brittle? Let me see some answers. I think Jophine got that one. Answer is C, makes the plastic less brittle. For question four, so Jophine got that point. Question four, about how long does it take, about how long does a bioplastic take to break down in the environment? Pretty sure I said this. It's an easy, 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 easy question, people. How long does it take bioplastic to break down in the environment? Let me see some answers. I think Michaela was the first one to get that correct. That's A. Answer is A. Answer is A. So that was Michaela, guys. 
And the last question. Michaela got three, Jocelyn got one. Who else can get some points for a last question? Last question, people. What is the purpose of glycerin in making bioplastic? Does it make the plastic more flexible? Give the pl give color to the plastic, make the plastic more brittle. These are easy questions, people. All right, I'm seeing some answers. I'm seeing A, I'm seeing C, I'm seeing Rikala Bowie. <laughs> so the answer is A, and Jophine was the first person to answer with the correct answer. So Jophine gets that point. So the answer is A, guys. It makes the plastic more flexible. So with um, my plastic had added five mils of glycerin versus Javon had added 7.5 mils. So his one is like softer. <laughs> and this one is a bit harder and thicker. And also I, I allowed my ticket a lot thicker. No, Ricola, you didn't win. You didn't win anything. I don't know where you got the answers from. I don't know what questions you were answering. But no, you didn't win anything, Ricola. So guys, we are using a heat gun at the moment, and that's to help to add some heat to the product to get it to dry faster and to finish the reaction, as the master Kevin said. <laughs> so this is like um, a chemist blow dryer, you can call it that. <laughs> so it's a heat gun, and we're adding some heat the product and it's pretty hard so don't do what I just did <laughs> all right so for the question I'm pretty sure that Jophine got two points and Michaela got three I hope I'm not mistaken or I didn't miss points so of course, we already know how the points go. For every point you get in the activity, you get 10 points on the leaderboard. So we will be updating the leaderboard by the end of this week to add this week's and last week's points. So you can get the final leaderboard for this week and for the end of October. So we're just adding some heat right now. And visibly, um, you can see the plastic looking drier. <laughs> getting dry. Right here, yeah, the heat can see it. You can see like a white apart. I don't know why I want to. Mm -hmm. 
It looks a little bit flaky, or it's in flat. Yeah, there it is. So it's dry. And as I said, if you are at home doing this at home, you can just pop it in the microwave for maybe a minute or so. And it dries pretty fast. So it's gotten harder. It's going to do this, guys, but you know, it's very hard. We're drying this one as well. Mm. Can you see the steam is already dry? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I see it. Maybe the plastic burning. <laughs> I don't think you need to see it. Yeah, it's getting harder. It does smell like plastic burning, though. Yeah, so, you know. So, the back of it is. Getting harder, right? You see the piece of paper? Yeah, it's getting harder. What do you do? All right, so this is the little piece that that Javon just go dry. So let's see how it's easy to roll. Should be light this one after it's easy to mold. Not too hard, but remember that the more glycerol you add, the more flexible it is. So if you want a harder plastic, then of course you add less glycerol. Yeah? It does smell like plastic burning, honestly. As I had mentioned before, the drying process is the longest part of it. Mixing reagents together, the materials together, heating, getting the thick bioplastic. That's the easy part. The longer part of it is the drying. I remember you have options. I don't know if you want to use your hair dryer at home <laughs> to do this. But you can easily use a microwave or you can just leave it to air dry, which will take, you know, a while if you do that. Okay. Mm -hmm.
So it's added a lot of heat to us now. So these are a lot harder. Let's see if I can clean this off. Ow. It's hot, by the way. Just so you know. After you heat it, you see that it appears less and less opaque. So it doesn't look as uh, yeah. This this thing I think it would harden more. It will harden more after. So I roll it into a ball. So I think it will harden more after it cools because it's hot right now. Almost born. So you can see. Alright. So this is what I have. That's what it looks like. It can bounce that little bit. But yeah. One the year. Much. So we're taking off the plastic now, guys. Bioplastic, that is. Time yeah. to see if I can more look into something. So and it's hot, right, by the way. So the top part, you can see that the top part dry a lot more than the bottom. And obviously, that's because we heat it by transition. There you go, guys. Are you guys ready for me to eat it? The one with this, eat something. <laughs> Why are you dangerous? There we go. Look at that. Very young. Miss it? Like it actually feel like. Yeah. Plastic. Oh, it's gonna. Oh my. Yeah, that's how it looks, guys. Yeah, that's a better view. There we go.
So I got a little haul today, at least. I got that. <laughs> oh. And it is partially bouncy. Is it my foot as well? Ah, no, no bones. Go again. Uh, oh, one, yeah. two bones. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I might go home and try this little. This is fun. Anyway, guys, that's you, Ricardo. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, guys, that's the end of today's meeting. That's the end of today's meeting. So we made some bioplastic. And, of course, you can try this at home. As I said, we're going to post the home version of the experiment where you can do your own bioplastic. Um, for the glycerin, if you don't get glycerin, you can use a vegetable oil. It contains glycerin. It's not glycerin only, but you can use it as a substitute. But glycerin is sold at supermarket, honestly. So it's not hard to get. And we'll see you Next week, say bye. Say bye. Oh, <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. And remember, experiment with a chemist, and you will love the reaction. I'll see you guys next week.